I'm going to be talking on, I think, somebody took, oh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, dealing with adversity, and I sort of apologize for doing this because it's a philosophical uh, topic, but I, I think uh, it might be of some interest to you because it certainly has been to me over the years. Uh, I have no conflicts, but as I say, uh, some of the information that I'm going to mention to you may have some value to you because dealing with adversity is part of the life of all of us, no matter what you do. And uh, how one manages the adversity uh, matters. And in my opinion, it separates the winners from the losers, and it's a major determinant of success no matter what field you're in, but pr particularly in, in vascular surgery or vascular uh, specialties of any sort. And uh, there are uh, many adverse challenges which we face in all aspects of our life, and they're either minor, intermediate, or major. And as I mentioned, they're particularly common in vascular surgery and vascular disease because of the severity of the disease we treat, which is pretty bad compared to other specialties, uh, the procedures are pretty complex, and because we live in a competitive administrative world, uh, as you all know, uh, and we work in a competitive world, uh, those of us in vascular surgery competing primarily with interventional cardiologists. Now, uh, Minor adversity, minor frustrations are very common for us in and out of uh, our operating rooms or angio suites, and they're often due to uh, problems with coworkers or associates. You're all aware of this, and I guess there's some nurses in the room, and you're certainly aware of this. And uh, it turns out that the easy, angry response, which some of the older surgeons uh, used to pride themselves on, usually exacerbates things, leads to stresses and strains, leads to errors and to bad uh, patient care, whereas a calm response uh, is a very positive thing, even if the situation is not so good. Uh, it leads to better patient care, uh, and so I think it's fair to say equanimity, and I certainly didn't always have it as a valuable asset. Uh, and it makes the vascular specialist better liked. Uh, and really, the important thing is it yields better outcomes. So composure is the most valuable asset in any phase of life, but particularly for a vascular specialist or a vascular surgeon. And that is true when the stresses or strains are the greatest. And, and that certainly is true with uh, pilots. And I, I don't know if any of you have seen the movie Sully or the miracle on the Hudson, uh, where uh, the pilot, Sully, uh, really kept his composure and saved everybody's life in a very stressful uh, situation. It's a good movie. Um, then there are in intermediate levels of adversity at work, uh, and that might be, for a vascular surgeon, certainly rejection of a paper or a grant, uh, or you can be denied promotion or assignment to a particularly choice assignment. And uh, I think the clever way to deal with that, although I often did not, is to regard your success as delayed uh, and not really denied and to keep working. And this certainly applies to uh, getting papers accepted or grants funded. Uh, early rejection or denial is part of the game. And so with a paper, for example, or a grant, you rewrite it, you revise it, you correct it, you never give up, you persist, and oftentimes uh, you'll be rewarded with success if you never uh, give up. And Winston Churchill said that when he gave a famous speech at a boys' school uh, several years ago, and his whole speech was just never, 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 and a few more nevers, never give up, uh, and that certainly characterized his personality or we'd all be speaking Japanese or German. Uh, then there, another uh, intermediate level of adversity is a challenging case or one that looks like it's uh, going to lead to a bad outcome. Uh, and that, to me, uh, 
can very easily be an opportunity. Uh, and even though the outcome can appear to be uh, dire at first, if you try to solve what appears to be an insolvable uh, problem and come up with a way of doing so, uh, it, it can represent an opportunity uh, and allow you to come up with an innovation uh, or creativity uh, in solving the problem. And that certainly has led to many advances. I know uh, Josh Adams' talk today really typified how he dealt with difficult problems and, and turned them into opportunities for success. So if younger people can uh, address these uh, potentially challenging and bad outcomes uh, by trying to uh, seek a solution and keep in mind that no problem is ever insolvable, though some are, I guess, but this, no problem is insolvable despite current thinking and so-called uh, current wisdom. And many of the things that I've been able to do have been in areas where um, current wisdom said they couldn't be done at all. That certainly was true with a lot of our limb salvage work as well as our early endo work. Then there's major adversity at work, uh, and that gets more interesting. That's being terminated or fired. Uh, how many in the room has been fired? Nobody? Well, there's one, two, three. Well, I can tell you most vascular surgeons of stature, that is creative leading guys, have at one time or another uh, been fired. And it's often not fair. Uh, it's done because of jealousy of one of your superiors, ego issues on their part, bias, uh, for example, of a boss, uh, and the firing turns out to be uh, basically a witch hunt, and you're the witch. And uh, it's particularly common in vascular surgery, where every, and I guess in, in any form of vascular specialty, every one of us have had bad cases, a few. No matter how good we are, we're always going to have bad cases. And if you're being witch hunted, those bad cases can be used against you in a very, very unfair way. And I, as I say, this has happened to many vascular surgeons uh, and has resulted in their unfair uh, uh, termination or firing. So how to deal with it? Well, uh, these are lessons I've learned bitterly. Uh, best thing is not to seek revenge. If you're fired, just get a new job and move on. And it may turn out that the new job is better than the old one. And as I say, most greats in vascular surgery from Rutherford on down have been fired at least once. Uh, and if it happens and you can find a new job, you actually can benefit from a new and better job, benefit from adversity as one door closes, another one opens. And it turns out succeeding in the new job or new venture is the best possible revenge that you can uh, achieve uh, against the person who unfairly uh, assassinated you. Uh, of course, you have to survive and not be assassinated completely. So uh, again, if you've been fired unfairly, the best thing you can do is succeed and get your revenge for the unfair firing uh, that way. Now, I think this is the last slide I'm going to show, or next to the last slide. What about major adversity in life, non-professional situations? Uh, example would be uh, your wife leaves you, uh, unjustifiably, of course. Uh, you break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Uh, and it turns out, to, at least I think, the same principles apply. You can be very, very upset, uh, but you should limit your period of, of upsetness, uh, particularly if you can't do anything about it. And having a vigorous, excessive negative response to the adversity uh, results in greater pain to yourself and to everybody else. And usually with a social situation like a divorce, uh, fighting it uh, increases the wealth of the lawyers. And that applies to other situations as well. So equanimity, minimizing reactivity, uh, and succeeding in your new venture, whatever it may be, uh, yields the best outcome and is the, uh, the best revenge for unjust treatment. Keep in mind it's a very 
imperfect world. Uh, so adversity is part of everything we do and how one deals with the many adversities that are uh, part of life uh, can make the world less imperfect. So I hope this has been value, of value to you as it has been to me and I'd be happy to discuss it.